Welcome to another episode of early 21st century cult members in the Pacific Northwest, everybody. Today is Friday, May 18th. We are in Vancouver, British Columbia. And again, for our series, we're going to be examining the behavior of Jehovah's Witnesses who definitely fall into the category of cult members. What defines a cult member, everybody? Well, there are many signs to a successfully indoctrinated cult member. In the case of Jehovah's Witnesses, notice how they immediately go to the phone. When the person that has approached them isn't even talking to them. Sign number one. Now, your guess is as good as mine as to who they're texting. Notice how they're texting, of course taking advantage of Satan's wicked technology when it suits them, enabling them to communicate without actually being heard. And if she was making a phone call, very likely she would be walking away so that the filthy apostate wouldn't be able to hear what she was saying, because as you all know, Jehovah's Witnesses are comfortable lying about people who leave their religion. So what is she texting? I don't know. I hope she realizes that I am not talking to her. I am talking to the people who are going to be watching this episode of early 21st century cult members in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, she's calling. That's good. I wonder if she will stand here and let me record what she's saying. Typically, the cult member will walk away, not allowing the capturing and recording of her conversation. And notice her do it again. And if I were to follow her, she then gets to say that I am stalking her. What will we learn about the deceptive tricks of the cult member today? Because notice how we did fall for it once before. I did make the mistake on many occasions of following the cult member who was on the phone to who knows who about me. And in the process of doing that, it was able they were able to then say that I was stalking them. So, for future reference, all filthy apostates who wish to chronicle the behavior of Jehovah's Witnesses, don't walk around. Remain stationary at the cart. Don't talk to them directly. Talk to the people who will be watching the footage. I wonder what she's saying on the phone. Well, no, he's not talking to us. He's talking to, I don't know who he's talking to, but he's not talking to us, but he's, he's called us cult members about five, six times, and I'm, I'm really uncomfortable. What should I do? What should I do, Jehovah? What should I do, Jehovah? Oh, Jehovah, what do we do when the filthy apostate's making fun of you? La da dee. I think because it's about uh, it's about five o'clock, you guys. I think they pack up and leave anyway at about five thirty. So they're just gonna they're probably just gonna tough it out and stand here. I think their shifts finish at five thirty. I wonder if these particular cult members are regular pioneers or if it's the circuit overseer visit and they've decided to auxiliary pioneer to create a good impression. In other words, they have to get their time in, so they're going to tough it out. Notice how they don't have Starbucks today. Notice how they're realizing that I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to you. Hey guys. Hey, 4747. I watched one of your videos recently. I haven't had a chance to watch all of it, but... Anyway. Love your style. I love your style. Right, okay. So in this installment of early 21st century cult members in the Pacific Northwest, uh, notice how... Notice how... Well, I haven't been here for long enough, but I would bet... I would bet that not one single person has asked for a free home Bible study. 
I'm so glad I'm finding you guys. Oh, oh, are you here all the time? Because you know what? I've been wanting a free home Bible study. I can't believe you're here. Can I have one? I, I wonder if that's happened once in the last... Oh, I wonder if that's happened once in the last 20 years in the uh, street witnessing, in the cart witnessing, and the special metropolitan witnessing work in Vancouver, I mean, whatever they call it now. I wonder if that has happened once, where the person who <gasps> freaked out at the sight of one of Jehovah's Witnesses had never been exposed to the good news of God's kingdom until they were adults. Because as we all know, the majority of Jehovah's Witnesses who are still in this cult, refusing to do real research into its origins and its controversies and its scandals and its covering up of child abuse, eight times out of ten, they were born to Jehovah's Witness parents or they were exposed to Jehovah's Witness teachings at a very young, impressionable age. Now, I can't vouch for these two witnesses. They will never answer me. They will never answer me now. See? They will never answer. If I were to say, Hi, sister. Oh, I used to study the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses. What a great experience. I learned so much. Say, when did you get the truth? If I were to say that to her right now, she definitely wouldn't answer. Hi, ma'am. Hi. Your future. Your choice. Your future, your choice. Yeah. Choose choose survival at Armageddon or choose eternal destruction at Gehenna. What do what 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 do you what do you let me guess. Let me guess which one you want. Let me guess. False Creek. You're in False Creek? Yes. Oh good. All right. I'm an apostate. Yeah. Okay. I'm an apostate. You shouldn't talk to me. Jehovah wants you to ignore me like these sisters are doing right now. But they're comfortable talking about me on their phones. Notice that. They won't talk to me, but they'll talk about me on their phones. <laughs> Life is good when you're one of God's favorite people, everybody. And all you have to do is make sure your phones are charged and you put in your time next to a literature cart and you get to survive the slaughtering of 99.9% .9 of all humanity and build your paradise. And make it to your meetings and comment enough times to keep the elders off your back and make sure that everybody's convinced that you're setting more progressive goals for yourself and don't go to any Christmas parties at work and thank your co-workers for their invitations but your relationship with God is just more important than your relationship with anyone else including your relationship with the local police who you don't call when children get molested in your congregation Oh, Jehovah, I hope you don't mind. I'm not going to call the police today. But I will call them now. Because I don't like this filthy apostate standing here. What do I do? What do you think Jehovah wants us to do, brother? Let's pray. Dear Jehovah, as loyal servants of your one and only channel of communicating your eternal purpose to mankind, please provide us with the direction needed to know what to do with this filthy, disgusting former worshipper of yours. He's obviously very troubled. We do love him, but if we have to, we will lie to the police to come and have them kick him out of here. Please provide us with the direction on how to proceed. Observe the cult member. Fix her hair. Observe the cult member probably wishing somebody would come and take an interest in the literature so she could minister to them, so she could say, Oh, hi. Hi, have you ever studied the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses? Him? Oh, I don't know who he is. I think he's not taking his medication. But, but, but you seem to be like a spiritually minded person. Have you ever been to JW.org? Notice how she's wishing, wishing that would happen right now. Somebody please come and take an interest in... God's kingdom so this poor sister can project how happy she is to be a member of this cult? Somebody please come. He's still here. And he's still talking. And he won't go away. It's smart. She knows that I can't hear what she's saying. 
And if I just take these five steps to go up to her, she then gets to say, okay, now he's invading my space. Any opening, any reason whatsoever. Hi, sister. How's it going? Hi, I'm Nanya. Nice to meet you, Stephanie. How's it going? Good. I am trying to, yeah. So, your future, your choice. What's, what's the choice? Are you familiar with I'm very familiar with your publication. Actually, you know what? I, I, you shouldn't talk to me. Oh boy, oh boy. Sorry this is such a boring episode, you guys. Uh, but again, the cult member has to control the conversation or be flattered by the conversation or there is no conversation, so I'm not even bothering really talking to them today. I'm talking to you. I'm recording you. Oh, by the way, I'm recording you guys. So I'm talking to probably the thousand people who are going to watch this within the next couple of days. I recorded my judicial hearing. And I recorded the meeting I went to before my judicial hearing where the brothers thought it would be funny to keep repeating my personal phone number in an effort to get me to not be able to upload the video because they're experts on privacy guidelines, but they're not because the video is still up. So your leaders locally don't know what they're doing. Your leaders in New York don't know what they're doing. But you guys know what you're doing right now, don't you? You guys know what you're doing. You know to text far away from me. You know to call far away from me. See, this is, this is a no-win situation for you guys. Because if you stay, it's just a longer video. If you leave, well, then you've left. I hope you've called the police. I hope they, excuse me, not you. I hope they've. I can't talk to you guys. That was a mistake. I hope they, I hope they have called the police. <laughs> oh, Jehovah, you can send the police. Yeah. You guys know who Brian Alston is? I'm not talking to you, by the way. I'm talking to people watching this video. Brian Alston is the name of the coordinator of the body of elders in a local congregation who physically assaulted me when I tried taking a piece of literature that you invite people today, although you're not inviting us today. Notice how they're not inviting us today. I wonder if that's deliberate. Notice how the sign doesn't say, take a copy. It says, learn Bible truths, whereas the other sign says, take a copy. And as we all know, according to Jehovah's Witness beliefs, the person ultimately responsible for saying, take a copy, is Jesus. Jesus says, take a copy. Come and drink of life's water free. But if you're a filthy apostate, if you're somebody who simply left this religion, it doesn't matter what your beliefs are, if you've left this religion, be prepared to wrestle one of Jehovah's Witnesses if you help yourself to literature that Jesus is inviting you to take. Interesting. Very interesting. This is Vancouver, by the way. This is the Robson Street... Uh, what is this called, you guys? Public Square? Public Area? Food trucks? Clothing shops? Protests will happen on the steps of the Vancouver Art Gallery from time to time. And quite often, Jehovah's Witnesses will set up as well. How's it going? Do, do, do. Here comes the brother. Hi, brother. How are you doing, sir? Oh, I looked like a fool just there. That actually happened last time. I didn't upload it because I looked really stupid, but I'll, I'll leave that in there. I'll leave that in there. It's good. It's good to look stupid from time to time. And nobody knows how to make Jehovah's Witnesses look really stupid the way ex-Jehovah's Witnesses do and are doing in greater and greater numbers. And you know what? At the end of the day, it is an act of love. It is an act of love. It's, 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 it's tough love. It was loving of the guy to shoot old Yeller through the head at the end of the movie. So, you know, in that moment, yeah, he wasn't a very nice guy. But ultimately, it was a loving provision for L old Yeller to be shot through the head. 
like they're talking. Observe. Observe the behavior of the early 21st century cult member in the Pacific Northwest. Trying to ignore, trying to block out the filthy apostate with conversations about how great the meeting was and how close to finalizing their plans to go to the convention they are. How amazing the talk was from the branch that said, don't listen to anybody but Watchtower. How awesome the JW Broadcasting episode was where Mark Sanderson talked about, we're spending two billion hours of in the preaching work, or whatever they're talking about. Can you guys hear? You guys are really good. I can't hear what you're saying. I know you're talking, but I can't hear you. I can see your smiles. I can see your love. I can see your faith. We can, excuse me, we can. See, this is, this is how I think you do this. Because they don't get to tell the police that I'm being abusive because I'm not even talking to them. See, this is why, you know, I kind of look like a, a, I look mentally ill right now. I am talking to myself for, 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 you know, for the casual observer, but you guys know I'm talking to you. Whereas if there were two of me, if there were two of us, we could have our own conversation right in front of the cart, and that would really upset them. In fact, this is why this all started for me. I was having a conversation with one of Jehovah's Witnesses in front of their cart, and the absolutely cult brainwashed power drunk sister couldn't stand the fact that we were having a conversation about Watchtower in front of her that wasn't a flattering conversation so she took out her cell phone took our picture started waving it around and said police have directed us to report anyone who harasses us to them when we weren't even talking to her I wish I wish I had been recording on that day because that is that is why I started doing all this Jehovah's Witnesses are so full of themselves that you can't even have a conversation in front of them that they don't want to hear without them calling the police on you that would have been great to capture but unfortunately it takes two to tango so it would have to be somebody else here with me maybe somebody will stop and talk to me But then again, I look like one of them, see? I've got a shirt and tie and I'm holding a magazine. I don't, I don't look like the typical filthy apostate. Pretty good. Research, research watchtower artwork depicting apostates. Hey, that's a good question. How many times has the art department in Watchtower actually depicted a filthy apostate? We know what the language is, you know, mentally diseased, deceitful doomed to die at Armageddon unless they grovel back to the local elders and be ignored for a year. We know what the language is. We know what the protocol is. But has there ever been... Hey, you guys. Has there ever been a depiction in the magazines from the art department of a filthy apostate? Other than, other than their funeral. Maybe, maybe there's, been a, there's been a shot of their funeral after they killed themselves. Oh, poor sister so-and-so, poor brother so-and-so, they turned their back on Jehovah and they were so ashamed of abandoning their only true friend and they killed themselves. Yeah, there's probably been a, there's probably been a, a, a depiction of their funeral in the artwork. But of the actual filthy apostate still alive, addicted to drugs, turning tricks. Uh, <laughs> crawling on the ground like a beast, like Nebuchadnezzar, I don't know. Probably car comparisons have been made, but a full-on depiction of a filthy apostate in the, uh, in the artwork. Again, notice, notice. Happy, happy people, when Jehovah will kill everyone that doesn't grovel to be just like me, grovel to be just like me. Look how happy they are. What a treat. 
Look at the presence of Jehovah's Spirit, you guys. Look at look at look at what it produces. Look at what it produces and those benefiting from its operation in their lives. Only Jehovah's Witnesses can be this happy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh you're working. Oh you're so good. Oh you're good at this. Look how good she is. Oh you're gonna be in the thumbnail. She's gonna be in the thumbnail, guys. I, I, I think I, I think I, I think I've got I think I've got the uh, title of the, uh, the video. Projecting, projecting, projecting happiness. Projecting. Uh, we'll see. It's not over yet. What's it been about? Twenty minutes. Still got another half an hour on here. Oh Jehovah! Please let my pen still work. Uh. <laughs> I wonder what, he, what he's saying. See, he hasn't heard me say a single thing. He's taken the word of one witness, you guys, and now he's on the phone. And now he's on the phone. And if I go over to him to record what he's saying, what lies he's telling, what misrepresentations he's spewing, what theocratic warfare he's engaging in. If I go up to him, then you all get to say, oh, 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 oh. now you're invading our personal space. Very good trick. Very effective. And that was the direction when they first started doing this work. If a filthy apostate, if an opposer begins to make life less than perfect for you, ask them to go off to the side and talk to them there, which is a tactic. It's tactic. It's pure tactic. Because then when the conversation doesn't go the way you want it to, you get to come back to the cart, and if the opposer, if the apostate follows you back to the cart, you then get to say that you've been stopped. Oh, Jehovah, why do they stop me? What does the future hold, you guys? What does the future hold for Jehovah's Witnesses? What does the future hold for Jehovah's Witnesses when it was taking them 4,000 hours of preaching to generate one baptism in the early 1980s? And it's taking them a little less than 18,000 hours now to generate one baptism. Now, you're never going to hear um, a brother or a sister or a governing body member use that figure specifically. Use those contrasting figures to explain how Jehovah is speeding things up. But you will hear them cite a bunch of other examples and a bunch of other scriptures to support their argument that Jehovah is speeding things up. But I wonder how they would use 4,000 hours equaling one baptism in the early 80s and 18,000 hours in 2018 equaling one baptism to prove that Jehovah is speeding things up. Actually, you know, it looks like Jehovah is slowing things down, I think. Observe. Observe the cult members. <laughs> it is... So good. See, this isn't discussion. This is projecting. This is cult behavior at its finest. They have nothing to say to me. They have nothing to say to you. About a thousand people are going to be watching this. I've already said that, so, okay. A thousand people are going to be watching this, and this is an opportunity for them to say to something to you and notice how they couldn't care less. Why don't you guys tell people who are going to watch this video that Jehovah is very displeased with them for watching apostate material? You're not going to be saying it to me. You're going to be saying it to them. This is a real opportunity for you guys. I mean, like, a lot of people, not a lot, but, you know, I don't know, definitely, I'd say, at least uh, 200 people. 200 people within the next 24 hours from around the world are going to be watching this. What would you like to say to them? They, notice how they don't want to say anything to you. They just want to say things to one another, project their love and their happiness and their faith and their zeal for love and fine works and their zeal and their love for technology, that's for sure. That's amazing. I wonder how many times a day Jehovah's Witnesses contradict themselves when it comes to talking about the technology that they absolutely run to. 
instead of God's word, instead of, I don't know, whatever. Again, notice. Notice how they have nothing to say to you and only, I don't know, whatever they're saying to one another. Well, you know, I'm almost made my time. Can you guys hang in for another 15 minutes? I've only got eight hours left on the month, you know? Eight more hours on the month and I get my time in. I appreciate it, sister. Thanks a lot. Because I really want to make my time. I think I'm going to be appointed an elder soon. I've been regular pioneering for about three years now. And, uh, oh, they've asked me to take the part in the next circuit overseer visit. So I think I'm going to get appointed as an elder. So would you mind if we stayed out a little bit longer so that I can get my hours in? I'm really close to being appointed an elder. And then I'll have the right to approach that sister I really like who has openly confessed that she's only going to let herself be courted by an elder. And if you think I'm kidding, plenty of you out there know that's true. Oh, Jehovah, let me be appointed so that cute sister will let me bake her a cake. <laughs> Look, prophecies that have come true. I wonder if there's an article in here, Watchtower Predictions, that haven't come true. Let's see if we can find it. I'll bet you a million dollars there is no such article anywhere <laughs> in 140 years of writing. Governing body predictions that haven't come true and our reasoning on those issues. Wrong expectations. That's good. That is, that is crafty. I wonder who the first Jehovah's Witness was that said, in the truth. Because that's just a weird way to talk. Nobody else in the world that I'm aware of uses the expression, in the truth. Oh, uh, I'm in the truth. How long have you been in the truth? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. If somebody can tell me the origin of that, I'd really appreciate it. Who was the first Jehovah's Witness? Who was the first Bible student? to use that weird expression in the truth you know what brothers and sisters because God is using us and only us because Jesus is using us and only us I think we should start saying that we're in the truth I know it sounds silly but what do we have to do with those outside do we not judge those inside so I say we start saying that we're in the truth and we ask one another, how long have you been in the truth? Like, I wonder what the circumstances were for that, for that expression. Because it does sound pretty silly. How long have you been in the truth? Notice how, when I first started doing this, I would say, oh, I started studying the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses at such and such a time. And they're kind of reluctant. Oh, well, wait a minute. You know, are you a brother? Are you not a brother? But then as soon as I use the right language with them, and I ask them, here comes a brother. Hey, you got a text? You think I'm not going to recognize you because you're dressed like that? Yep. Hey, you think I'm not going to recognize you? Oh, brother. You think I don't know you're a brother? That is amazing. Theocratic warfare at its finest. So I'm talking to a citizen. I'm not talking to the Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm talking to people who are watching this video. Yeah. Brother, I forget your name. Brother, brother, brother. What's your name, brother? That's right. Yeah, yeah. But I gotta run. I know you gotta run. These, these, these witnesses need your help, though. Come on, it's worth it. Come on, hang around. Maybe you can catch me threatening them. No. Oh, come on. It's, no? All right. Bye, J Dumb. Oh, Jehovah. Nobody wants to stop and help. That guy's a brother. That guy's an elder. Takes the service group once a week, has been for years. See, all he cares about is that I'm dressed and I look like a brother. That's good enough for him. That's how superficial you are. He's an elder. He's an elder. He's been a brother for years. And he walks right past. And he has no interest in what's going on. I know he knows who I am. I'm sure he knows who I am. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't. Yeah. Oh, boy. Look at the mildness. Look at the 
mild now. Yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> friendly. Observe the behavior. See, and if I weren't here, if I weren't here, how much do you want to bet that they'd be talking about this exactly? See, now that they're being filmed, now that they have to project what true Christians they are, now they engage in this kind of conversation. But if I wasn't here, they'd be talking about vacation plans. They'd be talking about, oh, did you hear that story about such and such? Just dismissing everybody else that isn't in their cult. But now that the spotlight is on them, notice how happy and friendly and enthusiastic they are about their worship of Jehovah. So I think this is how it works, you guys. You don't talk to them directly. Don't you dare engage Jehovah's Witnesses directly as a former member. How dare you even look in their direction. But apparently they don't mind when you just stand in front of them talking to your YouTube viewers or one another or whatever. So, yeah. That's good. That's good. Early 21st century cult members in the Pacific Northwest. Episode 1. Well, actually. I guess it is episode 1. Do, 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 do. Oh, when's he going to go away? Doesn't he have a job? Do you have a job? Have you taken your medication today? Do you have anything else going on in your life other than this? And then like 30 seconds later I say, you're only asking that so you can judge me. And she goes, I wasn't being judgmental. Jehovah's Witnesses are being judgmental just by standing here. You couldn't project a more judgmental attitude towards people who don't believe exactly what you believe than by doing this right now. Observe the behavior. Million dollar contract. Yeah. So it's okay, it's okay to partake of uh, Satan's wicked world if it keeps you in Prada, if it keeps you in Hugo Boss, if it keeps you able to make the payments on your timeshare in Acapulco. Because why shouldn't you have the best of both worlds? Why shouldn't you have the bling and the designer clothes and the uh, designer bags and the, uh, the VIP service at all the hottest restaurants in town? And, a big client list and a big paycheck and have a place in the paradise to come once everybody that you work with and put up with is killed by the God you serve. Life is good when you are one of God's true and only servants. This is good. I wonder how long they'd last if there was another apostate here with me and we were having our fun conversation right in front of them. That'd be cool. Oh, they're, oh. Are you guys, I wonder if they're courting. Notice, notice the courting. Notice the connection being established in the presence of the apostate while they sharpen one another, while they build one another up to withstand the demonic assault. Oh, are you guys, in the, I wonder if they're in the same congregation. Because they're really going to have something to talk about at the next, at the next uh, G-rated movie party. Uh, I hope that sister comes. I hope that brother comes. Remember that day when we were like getting to know one another in front of the apostate? He was kind of cute. She was really cute. I, I wasn't so sure about how much she loved talking about money, but you know what? Nobody's perfect. Jesus is perfect, and one day we'll all be just like him. Oh, Jehovah, please let that sister come to that movie party so we can talk about the time we projected our happiness in front of the apostate. Hey, there's Samuel Jackson again. It's Samuel Jackson again, you guys. 
Samuel Jackson look alike. He's incognito. <laughs> He's getting in character for his next role. This is Hollywood North. They do film a lot of movies up here. Actually, you know who I bumped into? I bumped into... Um, who did I bump into? Oh, texting. Oh, because I've walked away and have come back. Now you get to say loitering? Oh, you're waiting for me to walk away. Those few steps mean you get to say something new now, right? Oh, did I fall for it? Are you texting? I wonder if the cult member is texting. Okay, he's loitering. I got him loitering. I got him loitering, guys. Because I took some steps. See? Don't walk away from the cart, you guys. For future reference, don't walk away from the cart. Because then you walk back, then they get to say, oh, 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 stalking. Oh, oh, oh. Threatening behavior. Oh, Jehovah. Please let him walk away and come back so I can text that he's loitering, that he's... Uh, yeah. That's right. Oh yeah, who was I saying? Who did I bump into? Um, who did I bump into? You know, we bump into celebrities all the time in Vancouver. I can't remember who it was. It was... Um, oh, anyway. I wonder if they're both single. You guys are spending a lot of a lot of time in conversation with one another. I, I hope you're both single. Jehovah's not pleased. I hope you're both single. I hope they're both single. You seem the 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 notice the cult members getting perhaps excessively familiar with one another. Perhaps one of the cult members should say, "Well, it's been nice talking to you, brother, but I do have a boyfriend." I do have a husband. It's been nice talking to you, sister, but I do have a girlfriend. I do have a wife. I am a married brother. And before my heart runs away with me, and I know we're trying to keep each other strong in the presence of this filthy, disgusting apostate, but I, 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 have, to, I have to guard against wrong thinking. I'm going to go home now and try to ignore my pillow. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. I wonder, I wonder if these cult members have heard of Pillowgate. I wonder if they've heard Gary Bro in that leaked Bethel video. I wonder if this brother has seen the leaked Bethel video where a governing body helper is urging the brothers not to stare too longingly at their pillow. And I wonder if he thinks I'm making it up. Does it look like he thinks I'm making it up? I wonder. Observe the cult member. Observe the early 21st century cult member in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, do, 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 do. Why do birds suddenly appear every time an apostate is near just like me they long to be in paradise with you oh Jehovah I hope that sister doesn't get the wrong impression I hope she knows that I was just being friendly I know I'm really cool I know I'm really good looking I know I'm an elder, I know I'm a regular pioneer, I know I'm a real catch, but I hope she knows that I was just being friendly. You know what? 15 minutes is good. That's why you guys are only allowed to be out in service for 15 minutes, so you can have that happen and it's not going to go longer than that. Are you going to call her? Are you going to call? I wonder, I wonder if this brother's going to call that sister later. I really appreciate the way you were there for me with that apostate. I, I forgot to ask you, are, I, I, you're not married, are you? Are you married? Oh. Okay. Is it a happy marriage? Okay. Is your husband uh, regular at all the meetings? Is your husband an elder? Is your husband a regular pioneer? Is your husband on a first name basis with the circuit overseer? How long has your husband been a brother? Has your husband ever been to Bethel? Well, you know what? I have been to Bethel. I am a regular pioneer. The circuit overseer comes to my house for dinner every time he visits. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm, ha I'm glad you're in a happy marriage. But, you know, hi. Hi, sister. 
So I wish you all the best. Jehovah hates a divorce, but if he's ever unfaithful, I'll be here. <laughs> oh. And that does happen. I've seen it happen. I have seen sisters pine for married brothers. I have seen brothers pine for married sisters. Now, those of you know that I, I, I made that mistake. I did make that mistake. But I did not cross the line. Those of you that are just waiting for me to reveal some dirt about myself so you can get on with your trolling. Yeah, I did cross that line, but I didn't go too far. Jehovah, stop me from going too far. I wonder if these cult members have ever heard the question, who are you to revoke an invitation that Jesus is extending? Because that seems to be the common response right now among elders when apostates come to kingdom halls. They say, your invitation has been revoked. I was thinking about that. And you guys know full well that the person who is extending that invitation to all mankind to come and drink life's water free is Jesus. So when the elder says to somebody like me or you, your invitation has been revoked, I say you should say, who are you to revoke an invitation that Jesus is extending? Unless I'm disrupting the meeting, I get to be here. So guys, go to the meetings, sit in the meetings, don't disrupt the meetings, take away their power, because at the end of the day, all they've got, all the early 21st century cult member in the Pacific Northwest has got is their love affair with their phone. I wonder if there's going to be a kingdom melody about the cell phone <laughs> in a couple of years, the way you guys rely on them so much. Thank you, Jehovah, for my smartphone when I can't remember a script it comes in handy. Thank you, Jehovah. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Text the word so all people will hear. Text the word to your Bible study abroad. Text the word. It pleases Jehovah much. Text the word and survive Armageddon. Text the word. Oh boy, prophecy is being fulfilled today. I wonder if these guys know, if I were to ask them, of course I'm not going to ask them because I can't talk to them, um, what Isaiah chapter 44 verses 27 and 28 said. I wonder if I said... He is my shepherd, and he will completely carry out all my will. The one saying of Jerusalem, she will be rebuilt. And of the temple, your blank will be laid. I wonder if they'd know what the blank was. I wonder if they'd know that blank was foundation in Isaiah 44, 27, 28. See, they're going to hate it. I wonder if that scripture is going to get mentioned, and they're going to have to remember that I was talking about it. I wonder if somebody's going to reference Isaiah 24... Oh, sorry, 44, 27, and 28 at a meeting, and they're going to have to go through the agony of being reminded that that scripture came out of the mouth of a filthy apostate. Oh, Jehovah. Oh. I really, really wonder what the cult members have said on their phones today, considering that I'm not talking to them. Well, he's not talking directly to us. He is talking... He says he's talking to the people who are going to watch his video. I don't know. But he's definitely not talking to us. So what do I do? What do we do? I've never seen this before. When the demon-possessed, filthy betrayer of Jehovah isn't even talking to us, what do we do? Talk to one another. Talk to one another and project how much love you have. How much faith you have. Try to humiliate the filthy apostate and maybe he'll go away ashamed of himself. Hi, sister. Hi, brother. So, uh, how about that talk? Oh, I know, I love that talk. You know, I gave that talk once. I used that same point. I used that same piece of paper with the one with the 20 zeros. 
Yeah, that's in the it's in the, it's in the direction. So use that piece of paper with the one with the fifty zeros after it or whatever it was. Yeah. Episode one. Yeah. Early twenty first century cult members in the Pacific Northwest. You guys, know, I wonder if they know what a meme war is. Because Jehovah's Witnesses are definitely losing the meme war. I don't know, is he, is he, uh, that's good that he's not facing her. His body is facing this way, and he's turning to her. Because if he was squared off to her, that could be interpreted as sexual advancement. That could be interpreted as a romantic interest. Brother, when engaging with a sister in the ministry, be sure to have your torso facing forward and turn your head to talk to the sister so you don't confuse the poor sister that you're making romantic advancements. When trying to get rid of the filthy apostate, remain facing front and turn your head to the sister. Because flirting hurts. Flirting is harmful, says the other brother in that Bethel video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are some well-trained cult members. I should change the episode, yeah. Early 21st century well-trained cult members in the Pacific Northwest, because these two have really got it figured out. You guys have been doing this for a while. They've been doing this for a while. They really know what to do. Oh, Jehovah. No more food shortages. No more sickness. No more war. No more smartphones? We'll have to wait and see. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> fortune telling. Astrology. Astrology and fortune telling. Windows to the future? Windows to the future? Windows to the future? Oh. I wonder if the brothers are being told exactly how to speak when they give their talks, the memorial talks, or the ones where there's going to be a lot of people. No, don't put it like that, brother. I want you to... I want you to punctuate this word. <laughs> oh, Jehovah, I'm not a cult member. I am a loyal servant of yours in the last days. If only more people responded to your love just like me, that would be pleasing to you. So I wonder if these cult members think that this behavior, this projecting, this cult behavior, <laughs> this facade, this game, uh, is actually pleasing Jehovah. I wonder what they're going to tell themselves. I wonder what their personal prayer is going to be about tonight when they go home. Jehovah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving me the strength to ignore the apostate and to not overstep the boundaries with that sister. Thank you for remembering to keep my body facing forward and turning my head. Because if I were to turn and face the sister, she might have misinterpreted my body language and been hurt by what she perceived as me flirting with her. Oh, thank you. Notice how the cult members can come up with something new to say, so there's only new magazines every two months. There used to be two magazines every month, so instead of 24 a year, now there's only six. Because they know that having such big mouths for 100 years only made it possible for them to hang themselves, which they've done. Which they've done. Yeah. The dying breed the cult member in the early 21st century. 
No tolerance for diversity of opinion. No tolerance for having their own history mentioned in an unflattering way. No tolerance for humor where their organization is the butt of the joke. And that's, that's one of the things, yeah. See, I can laugh. I can laugh at myself. Jehovah's Witnesses will not, do not, and apparently cannot laugh at themselves. It's not funny. It's not funny. The prior...